One of the most iconic weapons defies the constraints of gravity and can actually manipulate objects in 3D space. It's known as the Zero Point Energy Field Manipulator, or most commonly known as the Gravity Gun. This powerful weapon does not use conventional ammunition, and it can be used indefinitely. But can we create this inexhaustible tool in real life? To be honest, it's highly unlikely to develop a weapon which can manipulate a wide diversification of objects. And this doesn't even include the feasibility of holding very large objects in mid-air without toppling over the user. I came to the conclusion, and this is my opinion, but I think this gun is manipulating space-time itself, and is creating a space-time bubble around each object that it's manipulating. So even though this gun is given an illusion that it's tracking, holding, and throwing objects, it's just manipulating a space-time bubble. To actually make this work, we need a better understanding of space-time itself, maybe even negative mass, or even creating antimatter on a large scale for the power requirements needed to make this space-time manipulation. But, hold on a second. Let's just scale down the complexity to something that's more simplistic and workable. We can manipulate smaller objects in 3D space. And even though it's cutting edge science, it is possible to make a far lighter imitation version of the gravity gun. A far lighter version. There are many different types of levitation which can be used to hold objects in mid-air. These include electrostatic, electromagnet, and even laser levitation. There are other forms of magnetic levitation, including diamagnetism. This can be considered one of the most universal forms of levitation, at least in the magnetic category, since many different types of materials can be levitated and controlled, including water and biological life forms like this frog. Don't worry, this particular frog did not immediately die from this effect. Diamagnetism works by using powerful electromagnets enclosed around a diamagnetic material stuff that exhibits magnetic properties when around very powerful magnetic materials. Theoretically, this could include humans, but you would have to figure out how to build a light enough gun to incorporate these very, very large electromagnets. And you would also have to invent a portable power source. As much as 100 Tesla to levitate humans, and that is a lot, which is over 2 million times more powerful than the Earth's magnetic field. This kind of magnetic field has only been developed in a huge laboratory in which the magnetic array weighed over 18,000 pounds and the generator produced over 1,200 megajoules, which is a lot of energy. Okay, so throwing combine soldiers or even headcrabs around with a diamagnetic portable gun is not possible with today's technology. But hold on a second, let's take one step away from diversified magnetic levitation and let's look at the perfect diamagnet, which is a superconductor. Superconductivity is a very strange phenomenon associated with magnetic flux fields. You can either levitate the magnet or superconductor, so it's kind of like the gravity gun holding objects in midair. But so far we have only discovered superconductors which work at extremely cold temperatures. And obviously you can only manipulate magnets or superconductors in this setup, so you can't levitate a piece of wood or plastic. But I actually like this form of levitation, because you can have one very powerful electromagnet behind a superconductor. And you might even be able to launch objects when they're in this form of quantum levitation. Please don't try to build this type of gun, as you actually might blow up yourself and the gun into a million pieces. But I will show some experiments in a future video about this theory. But what about levitating every kind of object, and is that even possible? Now there is one form of levitation which can levitate any kind of object in mid-air. And that is through using sound waves. One setup uses a transducer and a reflector, so it holds objects between these two mediums. Sound waves bounce between these two mediums and it can hold liquids or even solids. Another really cool setup uses multiple transducers to pinpoint objects in a particular space. And once again it can levitate solids or liquids. One device which utilizes this setup is called the acoustic tractor beam. It uses many transducers, and it can only levitate small objects. Another really cool device which is really similar is the Gauntlet, and it's similar to the acoustic tractor beam device, and it can grab and hold objects in 3D space. And since we are not getting Half-Life 3, this might be a good supplementation for a next generation game. Um, just kidding. Okay, so acoustic levitation does hold some promise, but we are still far away from grabbing turrets and bombs. And there's also the possibility that some other levitation breakthrough may occur in the future. And with the rapid progression of technology, nothing is really impossible at this point. And that kind of leads us into a promising technology, which might be able to mimic the gravity gun's properties. And that is a laser tractor beam. Yeah, the Star Trek kind of stuff. 
<laughs> yeah, this stuff is real, and NASA's already working on a prototype which uses a type of optical conveyor which can pull and push small particles of silica. Basically, the development team claims that you can not only push, but pull objects through wave structure manipulation. My speculation is that the power requirements would be huge if you're trying to pull objects with considerable mass, but it is a start and it sheds light on what could be the future of tractor beam technology. And who knows, it might be considerably better than acoustic levitation in the end. So can we build a real gravity gun? Um, no Mr. Freeman, we cannot build a gravity gun which can manipulate a wide diversification of objects and push them at extraordinary rates. At least for now. Okay, but in real life we actually have flashlights which last over 30 seconds. And to me that is worth something, so the joke is on you Mr. Freeman. So once again, uh, thanks for enduring all my gibberish. Please like the video if you actually enjoyed it or made it to the end. And make sure to sub to my channel.